Äh, übrigens, Stuhls hat mir gestern äh, was zugesteckt. Und das soll ich mir angucken. Und da geht es um Motion. Und Motion bin ich ja immer so... <lacht> da muss ich mal gucken. Race Beyond Matters hat nämlich... Äh, Race Beyond Matter hat nämlich ein neues Motion-System getestet. Und ich würde das gerne mal mir ansehen. Weil ich habe letztens, ich weiß gar nicht, ich glaube es war mit äh, Shugi, habe ich gerade über Motion gesprochen, dass wir, bei Motion ist das einzige, was wir, also ist ja glaube ich der einzige Bereich im Sim Racing, wo wir noch keine Budgetlösung haben. Und mich würde das mal echt interessieren, ob es vielleicht irgendwann mal jemanden gibt, der so in die Richtung geht, dass wir Budget haben. Vielleicht ist das ja eins dieser Gerätschaft. Schauen wir mal rein. Na dann mal los. It is finally time to reveal the secret motion system I use on my rig the last month. The QS210 was taken from very high security testing lab in Poland and provided to me from the underworld for dissection and all those weeks. Provided to me by the underworld, okay. It Otis tried to break the code and send it back to the black market. I'm kidding, of course. Cubic System sent it here, but was very confidential project. And okay. I had to be silent, which was hard thing to do, but we can finally talk about it. Oh, ich bin sehr gespannt, was das kostet. First, you know how crazy I am about my sim experience. And for years, I try to find the next small detail and bring myself closer to that immersion where I can forget my physical location sitting in my room and let my brain drift in that virtual world and produce all those chemicals for that ultimate experience. But ich weiß ehrlich gesagt nicht, wo Race Beyond Meta herkommt. Also es ist auf jeden Fall östlich. Ich hinterfrage sowas meistens auch einfach nicht, weil mir das bei Content Creatern, also ich habe, da ich selber einer bin, habe ich aufgehört, sowas zu fragen. Weil ich denke, es ist Sie sind da, wo sie sind. Das ist immer so meine, meine Einstellung. Sie sind da, wo sie sind. But also, those who know me for quite some time are aware of my skepticism about motion platforms, which I have tested over the years in different events. I always felt they are a bit out of sync and conflict with my visual senses and the feedback coming from the wheel. Even being really fun as an experience, if I wanted to set competitive times, I had to ignore those movements as much as possible and concentrate on the feedback coming through my hands. Occasionally, there were some motion weeks which felt more connected to the cars, but I remember only four of over probably 50 different experiences and that wasn't really enough to convince me making such a huge investment. Well, this may sound as cheap commercial statement. That motion kit attached to my rig is the turning point where I can clearly say Oh! Oh! oh Stuhlsen kriegt schon die Krise, wie der kein Deckel drauf. Ei, 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 kein Deckel drauf gebaut. Na gut, also er hat, also um das kurz zusammenzufassen, er hat sehr, sehr viele äh, getestet bis dato, aber war immer nicht so ganz so doll zufrieden und für seine Zeiten war das nicht so geil. Okay, cool. Jetzt bin ich gespannt. It is not just fun and immersive, but it's totally up to speed and sync with the sim and actually gives me raw details and car behavior information which have nothing to do with the force feedback and complement my understanding of the track and the cars. But before I tell you exactly what extra information I'm getting, let me show you what that kit is, how it works and how and why I touch it the way I did. So, that is Street Dove system and Dove stands for degrees of freedom. Basically, there are four actuators attached on each side of the rig and can simulate pitch, roll, and heave movements. The okay. specs of those linear actuators are also really impressive. The maximum stroke is 60 mm with velocity speed of 400 mm per second, which can create up to 0.6 G. Now, if those numbers doesn't create picture in your vision, I can tell you, those can be really violent movements for your body. Trust me, you don't want to use the maximum power of this system. Oh, Mann, doch, eigentlich schon. Und dann 100% force Feedback, gib ihm, Junge. Und dann eine Runde Nordschleife. <lacht> halber tot, halber tot, halber tot. It will physically hurt your body. 
I personally end up using. Oh, um, wie happy er ist. Das finde ich so schön an Race Beyond Matter, dass er immer happy ist. Also das, was er macht, macht ihn glücklich. Und das finde ich so schön. 25% of the power and still feel those violent movements pretty harsh in some circumstances. The other impressive part is the response time. 8 milliseconds maybe doesn't give you the exact picture, but to put this in context, human eye blink is between 100 to 400 milliseconds. In single blink, this machine can react at least 10 to even 40 times. Just to give you one visual example, check the movement of my physical safety nets and the virtual one. They are in perfect sync. That velocity speed of 400 mm per second plus 8 millisecond response time can exceed by far our biological sense capability. If you make simple research, you will find that human brain can perceive at maximum 60 frames per second and response time of 100 milliseconds is perceived as instantaneous. I guess that velocity speed and the 60 mm stroke of the actuator which gives big range of movement and chance to change direction at any given moment plus the super fast response time really put my senses in total sync with my vision and force feedback I'm getting from the wheel. Probably because they bring so close those numbers to my monitor's response time and force feedback, everything is so synchronized. The immersive part, mich, of course. Wisst ihr, was ich mich jetzt frage? Ob er seine Monitore mit jetzt da angebaut hat? Ich, also ich hoffe, er sagt's noch, weil ich stelle mir das immer komisch vor, wenn die Monitore sich nicht mitbewegen. Doesn't end with the brutal pitch roll and heave movements. Those motors can produce real time vibrations which spread beautifully to the aluminum rig in frequency up to 100 Hz. If the first part gives. Oh, das ist so geil, ne? Wie du halt wirklich denkst, er sitzt in einem Auto, weil du jetzt die Bewegung noch mit hast vom Schalten, vom Bremsen, von den Curves. Achtet mal, das ist so, das ist wirklich absolut geil. Me the movements to understand what the chassis is doing under braking, cornering, accelerating, going normally on the road or hitting hard curbs separately with each tire through those four actuators spread it to each corner of the rig. At the same time, they can produce wide range of different frequency vibrations and simulate a rev limiter, gear changes effect, wheel slip, rumble strip, engine vibrations, and those effects really bring the chassis to life and I can totally forget I am in wenn ich die Porsche höre, bin ich gar nicht wieder so richtig verlauft aktuell. Ich bin so verlauft in dieses Auto aktuell. Simulation. The mm. sense of engine rev through each gear, the chassis kicks from shifting up or down. Nee, the it's racing. Wheel slip effect shaking. The car simulating the slick, trying to regain grip. The tire passing over sharp curbs shaking my physical nets and body. The entire combination of 3 degree of freedom movement plus those effects and full sync with my vision transform the experience and bring it to completely different level. Month later of daily use, I still smile while driving. Some of you already saw and think why my wheelbase and gears doesn't move with the rig and there are a few important reasons I decide to detach those parts of the motion platform. You know, I always try to think out of the box and oh. analyze everything. I have also spent seven years of my life in race cars and I know what happens to my body under G-forces produced from the grip provided of those slicks. The Ach krass, also, oh, jetzt wird's interessant. Also er hat diese, also hingegen zu ganz vielen anderen hat er seine Wheelbase nicht Mehr am Rig dran für die Aktuatoren. Jetzt bin ich ja mal gespannt. Okay. The sustained G forces under braking, cornering and accelerating push my body front and back, up and down, just like it does with every free part in the car, like those nets, for example. Even if my body is in the bucket seat, tight, strong with the belts, it's still not fixed part of the car and moves around. The cushion of my seat and my flesh itself are compressed in those conditions. The wheel and the gear stick and any other fixed part of the car 
and my body constantly change position in relation to each other. In those motion platforms, it's impossible to create sustained g-forces which will squeeze my body and create that same effect. They only create momentary g-forces and for my own immersion, setting everything like that makes way more sense. Another benefit from that is taking load of the actuators which perform the best with 200 kg total weight in performance mode and 250 in heavy duty. Okay. As lighter the setup is, that much better will perform and as I already explained, this thing kicks really hard even at 25% gain. The other thing I really hated in most of the motion setups I have tested before is my wheel and gears moving separately from the screen picture. It just doesn't make any sense visually for my brain and instantly throw me out of the experience. Ich habe das noch niemals bei jemandem gesehen, dass jemand die Wheelbase, das Wheel und alles andere weggenommen hat und wirklich nur der Sitz und wahrscheinlich die Pedale auf den Aktuatoren sind. Maga, der hat richtig wild umgebaut. Die Konstruktion dahinter muss richtig fancy sein. I'm not trying to convince you what is the best way as all motions are limited and cannot produce sustained g-forces, but having it like this and mostly simulate what will happen with my body in a real race car gives me way more immersive experience and keep my brain connected. <laughs> Ohne Scheiß, wenn ich das so sehe, wenn er fährt und wie er sich bewegt, da kommt in mir selber schon, und ich hab's nicht mal, kommt Freude auf. Nur ihn da drinnen zu sitzen sehen, mit der Kamera, die so schräg hochgeht, da kommt bei mir total, absolut nur Freude auf. Das sieht so, das sieht so schön und so, äh, so, so befriedigend aus. My visuals. If you want to know how exactly I built that rig, stay tuned for the full video of that setup and all the small details. Oh yeah, guy! Before I show you the incredible software in which they have so many different settings and they are all super intuitive to play with and very well explained what each slider does to set the motion exactly to my personal like. Let's see what we have in the boxes. In three boxes, we will find four linear actuators with stabilization plates, eight pieces of brackets to attach the actuators to the rig, two of the power cabinets, control models, motion lock with two meter cable, and all the necessary cables to connect the two models in 3 dov configuration. Single model with two actuators can be used as well with additional pivot bracket for the opposite side as two dove configuration and later upgraded to three degree of freedom motion which is great for those who want to do it in incremental steps. Now, in this video I won't go in depth about dimensions or specific components used in that build which I will do when I visit the motion system facility and talk with the engineers who can explain better than me their choices for that build but one thing I can say for sure, this is heavy duty industrial quality build. It is a very serious piece of equipment which have to be expected from developers who have proved themselves over the years with some mm. really crazy projects. Also, the user experience is quite sweet as it took me probably an hour to read the manual, check all the components and fully understand what I have to do to get it on my rig, <coughs> install the software and fire up that first calibration process with zero previous knowledge. Everything is very well explained in the model for average guy like me, so I just follow the steps. The software is also very intuitive and guided my first steps through firmware updates and sim profiles. I set the numbers of my particular set around the calibration, choose the first default profile for my first experience Ooh. and the rest is history. Some of you remember my white smile from that very first drive. I just start jumping from sim to sim in the next few days and couldn't get enough of this next level experience. I remember being at my normal work during working days and thinking that can't be true. 
how this setup is so connected and sync with my sim. The only time I was so impressed with sim upgrade was jumping in VR for first time. After a week of me just having blast with the new cockpit, I start tweaking the different motion settings and special effects which, as I've said before, are very well explained for each slider and the das scheint wohl die stramme Konkurrenz zu, ähm, zu D-Box zu werden, ne? Für ein bisschen weniger Geld. Yes. Zero confusion. The gain for each access movement and the sharpness of the movement itself. And all this can be done in real. Oh, ich bin so neidisch auf dich. Also wirklich positiv neidisch, dass du die, den Shifter, also die Sachen von SimMagic hast. Die hätte ich auch so gerne. Weil die haben so, die sind so von der Fläche her sind die richtig klein und die sollen richtig, richtig gut sein. Time having the car on the track. Then I realized there are different profiles from drivers who have the QS220 model and I pick up one created for iRacing from Michael Stanek who have turned those settings to match his personal preferences. And I took the Mercedes GT4 for a ride on Sebring. This is a track I hate because I'm super inconsistent around and every time I have to race on it, I have to do tons of practice to be competitive. Last and first corners always drives me crazy yeah. and never fully understood why I am so inconsistent there. My main improvement came in the last corner, realizing exactly where those bump on the road are pushing my ABS engagement and not allowing the car to turn and keep in for which I adjust my brake inputs and manage to squeeze speed in mid corner and achieve better exit and all that consistently now. And the same with the first corner, which have very harsh bump upsetting my front grip under braking with the same ABS problem. Just that little information changed my entire world and turned unpleasant track for me to nice, consistent driving experience. Die Frage ist, ob er jetzt schneller geworden ist oder langsamer. Mal I can clearly feel when exactly each tear and suspension load and unload individual overdose anomalies of the road and set the correct steering and pedal inputs to balance the chassis and not letting that grip and rotation lost around those places. We are usually getting a bit of that information from good direct drive wheel to some extent, but those perfectly seen actuators almost totally mute that feeling from my hands and take it now from my body. I still control the side load of the grip through the force feedback of the wheel, but the vertical load, which is vitally important for the balance of the entire chassis, comes from... Uh, der, ist, der ist sehr schnell, race it by Kimi. Also, race beyond matter, der ist... Also, der hat auch schon vorher... Ähm, also, da kann man sich auch ein Video angucken, der hat ziemlich viele Sachen auch schon gewonnen. Also, der ist auch, wenn ich das richtig in Erinnerung habe, real life, der ist richtig zügig unterwegs. Also ich habe ich hab das Gefühl, das ist erst ein bisschen wie, äh, wie Nils Naujux mit so ganz viel Input und Wissen und Hintergrundwissen und Physik und den ganzen Kram und der baut das immer alles komplett auseinander und für sich wieder so hin. Also der, der ist schon richtig zügig. From those four schon was. And this reach of information. There are so many bumps around all those tracks I drove for over 15 years in which I didn't know their existence and now I can fully understand the reason of the car behavior on certain places and adjust my inputs appropriately. It is completely new layer of information I did not have before. I'm not talking about immersion. I'm talking about important chassis behavior feedback which helps my better understanding of the track and vertical load of each tire and suspension. That is huge. Now, let's talk about the immersive part through those special effects. First thing I felt with stomach profile is the different kick of the rig in up and down shifting. It was a bit more subtle and more realistic and didn't felt like the seat is trying to break my back, but mostly like it's coming deep from the chassis without overwriting the other effects which make it more realistic and not that artificial. Also, he has pulled up the rumble strips effects which make the car really shake while driving over those curves and I can feel exactly which tire have the contact with <laughs> that different surface. 
I'm telling you. What the day? vibrations are so realistic and believable. Absolutely brutal feeling. The same happens when I lose the car and the slicks are trying to regain the grip, which in real car is not exactly smooth slide like normal tires. As I've said, I've seen a lot of things said before. This kind of motion platform power is on the vertical forces and hitting curbs, breathing anomalies is something they can really simulate very well and here is where that profile gives a lot of attention. It is crazy how radically different can be the experience tweaking those parameters. You have limited also the body roll and pitch movements which is something I personally wanted to tweak as those movements try to simulate sustained lateral forces or at least try to make the brain think that way giving strong inclination to the body left and right or forward and backward moving the liquid of my vestibular system and that works for fly simulators and can help you understand your position to the horizon but definitely doesn't das ist halt ein computerspiel gerade ne es ist ein spiel so das ist absolut crazy das also es gibt rigs die leute gebaut haben die sind einfach so in Same. Don't work well in car simulation, or at least for me. So that profile limits those, but still gives sharp feedback to which side the chassis is ruling and pitching. If you remember what I've said, it happens to our body in real car through sustained lateral and braking accelerating forces get squeezed in the seat or in the belts and moves a bit in relation to the cockpit. That exactly is achieved here and my body moves sharp a centimeter two on each direction which makes the experience even more convenient. From other hand, the vertical forces are up with boosted sharpness and can produce absolutely realistic g-forces up to 0.6 g and simulate the harshness of so a racing one. car and give important information and extremely realistic hip movements with up to 60 mm velocity with the incredible speed of 400 mm per second. Those are mostly the movements which makes me smile and help me understand the track. But nur beim Zugucken muss ich lachen, weil ich das so schön finde. And the car better. Also, those heave movements of each actuator can create the feeling of understeer and oversteer through combination of different velocity movements in relation to each other and can be tweaked in the settings of the software as well. Another great compliment in the software motion system team develop is the screen and VR way. I will make completely separate videos for each of those effects as there is a lot to test and explain but basically what it does is for stationary display systems it moves the in-game camera to match the current position of the motion platform and allows the picture on the screen sync with the motion movement if the monitor is not attached to the platform. The VR headway 2.0 is also huge for the virtual experience, eliminating the false headset view orientation caused from the platform movements. But as I've said, those effects deserve dedicated videos on which I'm working on and will share soon as they have huge impact on the experience. Another huge impact on the feeling of the chassis comes from the post-processing filter which limits Super. the range of the motion but increases the small movements at the same time and in the stunning profile have been created curves which totally change the entire experience giving even more attention to the small anomalies of the track. In those two examples, you can see the safety net movements in the linear settings being way smoother than the curved ones, which gives all the necessary vibrations created on the chassis. Whatever happens on the chassis of the car passes through my entire body, which gives really immersive sensation. I'm really amazed how radically different the driving experience is just from tweaking the software. It is like two different motion platforms which shows the capability of the software and the hardware. In the last month, this motion kit turned upside down my view from 
motion is very fun experience but confused my senses to now I understand the behavior of the car in certain places and can get full advantage of that. Now, let's move to the exciting news. As I've said before, motion systems are leaders in the field, producing some <coughs> crazy simulators for training purposes, even for the military. Some of their professional builds like this one are not just for entertainment, but also training and can do crazy things, but of course, cost a lot. However, the cubic system models are for home use and if you have seen the reviews from Boosted Media and Sim Racing Garage, you are familiar with the QS220 model. Well, the QS210 which I have here is the little brother with almost half the price. If you compare the specs, there is no big difference between those two except the velocity speed which Okay, muss ich die Kreditkarte holen? Which is 800 mm per second and can produce up to 0.8 G and the actuator stroke up to 100 mm which can create a bit more heat movements. Although our benefits are fitted in the QS210 with the same latency and all the effects I explained previously with total price of 5.7 K. It is still expensive gear, but way more affordable. And if someone don't want to compromise <clears throat> and go for the QS220, they reduce the price from almost 10k to 7.9k. Really crazy times for sim racing. I can't fit everything in one video, and in this one, I mostly wanted to give you a little ride through my experience and give you some taste of the excitement going on the last month. But with the time, I will break down all the details. And one last thing which was really important for me is the silent work of the actuators. I am on the second floor and my neighbors haven't complained at all, but you can hear it with all the ambient sound of my room in normal use. The shifters and the haptic motors are way louder than the Super schönes Video. Super, super schönes Video. Ey Leute, ohne Scheiß, ich sag's wie es ist. Ihr solltet, ihr, ihr solltet Race Beyond Meta folgen. Tut euch selber den Gefallen, wirklich. Folgt dem. Ein ganz wahnsinnig toller toller Typ, der ganz viel rumtüftelt und macht und äh, ganz, ganz tolle Reviews macht und auch andere Sachen bespricht. So. Also es ist nicht nur Reviews, ganz, ganz toll. 